Nganga, Wikipedia article audio. Nganga is a Bantu term for herbalist or spiritual healer in many African societies and also in many societies of the African diaspora such as those in Haiti, Brazil, and Cuba. It is derived from asterisk Gunga in Proto-Angela, an early branch of the Bantu family. The verb form related to it, Gang relates to wisdom, knowledge, and skill. As this term is a multiple reflex of a proto-Bantu root, there are slight variations on the term throughout the entire Bantu-speaking world. In Africa Shona Nanga slash Zulu Nyanga Congo Nganga In the Americas In popular culture The owner and operator of Ngasi who ministered its powers to others, was the Nganga. In the Kingdom of Congo the term Nganga was the name for a person who possessed the skill to communicate with the other world, as well as divining the cause of illness, misfortune and social stress and preparing measures to address them, often by supernatural means but sometimes natural medicine as well. They were also responsible for charging Ngasi, or physical objects intended to be the receptacle for spiritual forces. When Congo converted to Christianity in the late 15th century, the term Nganga was used to translate Christian priest as well as traditional spiritual mediators. In modern Kikongo Christian priests are often called Nganga and Zambi or priests of God. In South Africa, the Inyanga has a medicinal role, in contrast to the Sangoma, who deals with divination and the ancestral spirits, however, the distinction has become blurred in some areas and many traditional healers tend to practice both arts. In Swahili, Mganga refers to a qualified physician or traditional healer. Among the Shona people of Zimbabwe, a Nanga is a traditional healer who uses a combination of herbs, medical slash religious advice and spiritual guidance to heal people. In Zimbabwe, Nangas are recognized and registered under the Zenitha. They are believed to have religious powers to tell fortunes, and to change, heal, bless, or even kill people. Traditionally Nangas were people's main source of help in all matters of life. They have existed for decades well before the British colonial era. Guerrilla leaders are said to have consulted with Nangas during the Rhodesian Bush War. Even today, Nangas are consulted by the people for advice and healing of many illnesses. Sometimes Nangas refer their patients to Western medical practitioners and hospitals in case of emergency or illness they can't cure with the help of their healing spirit. An English missionary describes how an Nganga looks during his healing performance. Thick circles of white around the eyes, a patch of red across the forehead, broad stripes of yellow are drawn down the cheeks, bands of red, white or yellow run down the arms and across the chest. His dress consists of the softened skins of wild animals, either whole or in strips, feathers of birds, dried fibers, and leaves, ornaments of leopard, crocodile, or rat's teeth, small tinkling bells, rattling seed pods. This wild appearance was intended to create a frightening effect, or kimbulua in the Congo language. The Nganga's costume was often modeled on his ngasi. The act of putting on the costume was itself part of the performance. All participants were marked with red and white stripes, called makula, for protection. The circles of white around the eyes refer to mamanai lines. These lines indicate the ability to see hidden sources of illness and evil. Yambe and Ganga often wore white masks, whose color represented the spirit of a deceased person. White was also associated with justice, order, truth, invulnerability, and insight, 
all virtues associated with the Nganga. The Nganga is instructed in the composition of the Gandhi, perhaps in a dream, by a particular spirit. In one description of the Banganga's process, the Nganga then cuts down a tree for the wood that he will use to construct the Gandhi. He then kills a chicken, which causes the death of a hunter who has been successful in killing game and whose captive soul subsequently animates the Gandhi figure. Based on this process, Jell writes that the Gandhi is a figure an index of cumulative agency, a visible knot tying together an invisible skein of spatio-temporal relations of which participants in the ritual are aware. In Cuba, the term Nganga refers to a certain creation made with an iron cauldron into which several items are placed. It also refers to the spirit of the dead that resides there. In Palo, it refers to an iron cauldron used to imprison evil spirits using chains, padlocks, knives, etc., which can be used for black magic. In some city societies, destinations, a tribal shaman is named Nganga.